Um, yeah, so I was kind of thinking about a thing that I blogged just a second ago, and um, I'm so used to censoring myself when I participate in social media because I'm concerned about what my clients will think. Um, because... I don't really like capitalism all of that much. And I know I run a business, but really, really, it's making the best of a bad situation. And um, and I've done work for people, and I feel like I've sold my soul. Probably the um, the best instance of that actually was when last year. Actually, fuck, it was a year before now. I worked on an ad campaign for um, SUVs, and I just despise SUVs and just the whole concept of making... Um, uh, basically what, what should be classified as a truck under American legislation and then call it a car and then you get to dodge all the stuff and everyone's driving around these big huge ass gas guzzlers and the worst thing about SUVs in Wellington um, is that it's a really small city and it's got really little windy roads up hills and really tight car parks and it's just the stupidest thing in the world to be driving around this town um really. But, you know, uh, I've got to pay the rent, so I um, did the work on that campaign, and I just kind of shut up about it, actually, online. I didn't tweet it, well, I, I didn't even think I was on Twitter, but, you know, I didn't post it on Facebook or anything. So, um, I guess this video diary is a bit of a confessional as well, and I was just discussing with my friend before, my lovely friend Rose, who does a radio show on uh, radio23.org, um, what is the correct term for uh, what I'm doing, which is a uh, video blog? And um, I don't know, is it a podcast, a v-blog? And then I came up with, uh, she, she mentioned reality television, and, um, and, and I think they call it a confessional when they go and do their little video diaries. So, um, yeah, I suppose this is my um, little confessional. And, uh, yeah, and I've gone to some um, lengths to try and dissociate this, what I'm doing, with my um, professional life. Uh, probably not extraordinary lengths, because I'm not um, sitting with a light shining behind me with a voice digitizer going over my voice. But I don't really want potential clients to run into me um, through Google searches, and the internet's a big enough place that you can just kind of get lost in the noise. Uh, and... And I, and I don't think any of them would be really surprised um, at how rabid some of my views are, but, you know, I, I just kind of don't want it too connected with me. So um, you might have guessed that uh, Rock Rogerson is, in fact, a pseudonym. Um, but, you know, it's actually got enough just to separate a Google search on my um, real name, which we shall not be revealing, um, from all of the stuff that I'm going to do with this um, little artist kick that I'm on. Yeah, I actually, um, yeah, I don't know, I just, I'm just not properly motivated by money and status. Like, like I run a business and, and you know, I know what I could do to um, make it grow and I could get investment and do some more sales work, but it's just kind of, it's just kind of more of the same. And, and creatively, it, like I was saying before, and again, I, this is why I'm recording this now, because I could tell that I was censoring myself, um, it's just the same, more of the same shit, just selling, using, you know, technology and, and creative and graphic art and, um, you know, social media strategy to get people to buy more products, basically. Well, that's what it boils down to, my, um, like, kind of life, creative life in 2009 was entirely focused around getting people to buy product. And um, sometimes it's a little bit indirect, like if I'm doing... work for, um, and I'm not kind of so stupid as to name kind of clients, but uh, organisations that might not seem like they are selling something tangible, they um, usually are actually, there's some kind of profit motive in their behaviour. And, um, you know, and I've spent a lot of time thinking about um, uh, basically ways for people to get their credit card out and type it in. And one of the things I know about uh, <laughs> about me um, is that I kind of feel like I need to be doing something creative or I just go fucking crazy. And I had this really horrible year in corporate IT um, one time when I spent a lot of time in the sixth floor disabled toilet on the floor crying uh, because I'm a bit of a suck and a bit of a, you know, I'm sensitive. 
the whole beige and grey and need a swipe card to go to the toilet thing really it really didn't work for me. Um, oh, I've completely lost the thread of what I was saying. Oh, oh well. I kind of had a feeling that might happen because I was recording this at, what is the time? 11.55, it's quite late at night. Anyway, I remember the point I was making because there was just nothing creative about that job whatsoever. Just just nothing, and the people were, well, they weren't morons, they were all extremely bright, like, my team leader used to write artificial intelligence programs to compete playing chess with other AI programs on the net, but he was fucking boring, fuck, he was a boring dick, um, and, you know, and enough time's passed, mm. do you like my pyjamas? I'm wearing pyjama pants, in public this year I'm trying to foster an image of English gentlemen, but I, I suspect, actually, since I'm going to be recording these things, um, probably at home in the evening you're going to see my casual um, attire. Uh, yeah, so I was kind of doing a goal setting session for 2010 because it's important to have goals and I, I really despise the kind of Anthony Robbins, Oprah Winfrey, Louise Hay, um, personal power, self-help, dream your dreams, highest reality um, stuff because I think it's actually bullshit and um, ignores kind of quite real structural things in society about um, who you are and what your gender is and what your ethnicity is and what your sexuality is and have you had an epileptic seizure in your life and did someone die last year and all of the stuff that's just completely out of your control um, and I just think it made, well it made you know it actually made me quite unha unhappy because you know I did have a little go with that stuff um, but nevertheless it is good to have goals and uh, and I guess I was feeling a bit scratchy as well so I kind of wanted to see what would happen if I um, turned my kind of creative urge away from kind of business stuff, which really, really doesn't excite me. And like I said, I don't really like capitalism. And running running a business is me making the best of a bad situation um, uh, into something that, some creative endeavor that wasn't motivated by um, a bottom line, basically. And, um, you know, I understand I'll need to keep working, I'll need to keep running my business to, to have money to do all of this stuff. Um, but the stuff that I'm doing doesn't necessarily need to uh, return any kind of profit. And I find it interesting that I'm stuck on this idea about a bottom line. I've clearly been in the business world for um, far too long. So um, so that's kind of it. And uh, I've got a whole bunch of ideas um, spinning around in my head. The main thing that I'm kind of ex interested in at the moment is the way that uh, machines subtly affect our behavior during the day and kind of my big example of that is traffic lights people stop the car and where the cars are people don't walk even even if you think you're jaywalking and not paying attention to the light you still have to pay attention to the cars and there are all of these computers all over the city or well, one computer I actually don't know how it's set up um, but there are kind of computers controlling people's movement within the city during the day just through kind of traffic lights and um, obviously it's a lot more sophisticated than that um, if you think about other technologies that we interact with all of the time, like uh, email and um, swipe cards and lifts and reward cards at the supermarket. Um, but traffic lights are kind of a good tangible example of that. So I'm kind of thinking about using that for the basis of an exhibition that I want to call um, a City for Living In. <laughs> no, a Society for Living In. A Society for Living In, and that's kind of referencing that Bauhaus idea of um, a machine for living in, because that's kind of what we've got. Um, in our urban kind of context, as we live in this big machine all of the time, and just kind of exploring exploring that and the patterns that emerge from living within that machine, and um, and I guess I'm kind of relating it to, and I'm going to say natural patterns. Um, I, I don't particularly like the distinction between natural and synthetic. I think it's a bit um, uh, it's a bit weird. Uh, but you know, things like the tides and um, night and day and getting hungry and wanting to go to sleep are all kind of, you know, rhythms that we have and just kind of exploring how machines impose those patterns on us. So there you go, that, that's what I want to do. I want to make three sculptures um, out of found materials and there's going to be an interactive component because I'm kind of clever with computers and um, that'll be exhibited somewhere before the end of the year and hopefully that will um, form, you know, that part of that portfolio that I was talking about. Um, earlier, so yeah, I just needed to block that, I did, it was, it was in me, it, to get it out. Um, and my cigarette has run out, and it's cold, a little bit cold out here, Wellington in the summer's not great, and uh, I'm sure we will catch up again soon. Okay, kiss kiss, no time.